Hello and welcome to uh, this lecture uh, where we will continue our discussion on uh, control hazards and uh, what are the possible uh, mitigation techniques. So this lecture we will talk about a technique called delayed branch and the notion of branch delay slots. So in the last lecture we were discussing uh, about various techniques that can mitigate the stalls and, and uh, we, we kind of end up with uh, speculation and, and uh, killing the pipeline or killing the instructions uh, in the pipeline, flushing it out. And, but still, uh, that won't improve our performance. Right? It, it still uh, introduces uh, delays, right? Yeah, we can either assume that branch won't be taken or branch will be taken, uh, but, but even that, that doesn't provide uh, good performance all the time. So there is a technique called delayed branch. The idea is uh, pretty simple. It just says that if, if a particular branch is uh, going to be taken, uh, just delay it by a few number of instructions. So if you look at the slide, it says there is a branch instructions, uh, instruction, let's say this is IB, and this is the branch target, ID, right? So ideally you should go from, uh, IB to IT, but as we have seen, uh, you will be knowing when exactly to, uh, like where exactly to uh, jump and uh, what is the target address at the end of the decode or execute stage. So that that was introducing delay. So instead, uh, the notion of uh, delayed branches, why not introduce instructions which are uh, kind of anyway uh, independent of branch or maybe something that we can just fill up to uh, mitigate the stall, right? So this is actually the delay slot, the branch delay slot. And if you have a, a branch delay slot of n instructions, that means you are uh, providing an opportunity to introduce n instructions between uh, the branch instruction and the taken branch. Right or, or where exactly it will be taken, not the taken branch. Okay, so it it, it it's kind of an old phenomena. It used to be there in the old risk processor. Uh, modern risk processor don't have this because it it introduces complexity when it uh, uh, interacts with the sophisticated uh, branch predictors that we will see uh, in in uh, some of the future lectures. So uh, to understand uh, the notion of branch delay slot, let's assume we have one slot. That means given a branch instruction before we jump into the target we can actually introduce one instruction okay but what if the branch is not taken right this is the branch instruction id and here let's say the condition is not true or if you are checking a condition and based on the condition you are taking a branch right for example uh, if you are take, uh, checking whether uh, the value is zero and based on that you are uh, taking a branch but it, it turns out that uh, the value is not zero so then what will happen is this is your untaken branch instruction IP, right? But the branch uh, delay slot has uh, no idea about whether the branch is taken or not taken. It will just introduce one of the instructions which are uh, kind of independent of uh, this control flow and uh, try to fill the pipeline. And once it is done, you will actually uh, start fetching your PC plus four say. So this will be your PC, let's say, this will be your PC plus four. Okay. So uh, this is for the case where the branch is not taken. When the branch is taken, uh, similar uh, uh, philosophy here, but now this IB is actually uh, jumping to a different target address, let's say IT. Okay. And before getting into this target, we are actually fetching an instruction in the uh, delay slot. Okay. So if you look at in the ideal case, uh, depending on the number of uh, branch delay slots, uh, you will be able to mitigate uh, the stalls that are coming because of the branch or control hazard, right? But, but the question is what exactly to put in this particular slot? Like what, what should be the instruction, right? Uh, be before uh, jumping into what exactly we should put, uh, the first thing that you should keep in mind is you should not put a branch in the branch of the slot, otherwise it will mess up things big time. Okay, 
uh, you can think about uh, the issues that may come up if you put a branch in the branch delay slot. Okay. So remember, uh, this branch delay slots are actually uh, scheduled by the compiler. Okay. So the compiler will actually insert those uh, instructions. Okay. So let's let's look at the possibilities. So this is option A, which talks about branch delay slot having an instruction which is something before the branch so it's completely independent of the branch if, if you look at uh, this particular instruction irrespective of this it, if condition is true or false this instruction should be executed right so instead of creating instruction one and instruction two uh, what compiler can do is it can actually make this one as instruction one and this one as instruction two in, in the temporal order okay Next comes uh, from the branch target. So if the compiler is super intelligent, it knows where exactly it will jump, right? So you can directly uh, put the branch target in the branch delay slot. So that is the ideal case, the best case, right? And and uh, in this case, there won't be any stalls, obviously, because you are directly going to the branch target. The other option is. Uh, the fall through path the fall through path is the path uh, which is actually not taken so any instruction which is in the not taken path uh, and then uh, instruction just just after that uh, is uh, actually the fall through instruction okay so uh, again it depends it, it it will work if you are actually uh, considering branches which won't be taken most of the time uh, otherwise again b and c are kind of uh, probabilistic right depending on whether the branch will be taken or not taken uh the, the schemes uh, will be effective or it may not be effective right but this guy is actually going to the branch target directly it's assuming no i won't be going to the branch maybe i will take the fall through path okay but if you look at option a this is introducing an instruction which is completely independent of uh, the branch right so so uh, overall uh, option a is the best choice if you look at uh, from uh, the compiler perspective okay so with the notion of uh, different stalls that we have uh, discussed about so now now the average cpi or the cycles for instructions uh, uh, is getting affected right so remember previously we had a average cpi of one uh, that means uh, every clock cycle we are pumping out one instruction right so but now we, we have introduced uh, uh, S stall cycles. So uh, the stall cycles can be because of the data hazard or control hazard. So what will happen now is you are, you are adding S cycles extra to your cycles. Uh, the number of instructions remain the same. So this becomes an additional uh, delay component here in your average CPI. So uh, which means your CPI will now be greater than one which is not a good thing right so if if we go back to our pipeline speed up equation where we discussed that in the ideal case uh, the pipeline uh, speed up is equal to the pipeline depth or the number of stages right so in a vanilla five stage pipeline uh, ideally we should get a speed up of five times right but now if we talk about the notion of let's say branch and different kind of um, control flow jumps, a branch, uh, conditional branch, unconditional branch jumps, and whatever. So this will introduce stalls, right? Previously, the CPI used to be one. That's why the pipeline speed up used to be five. But now, uh, because of the pipeline stall, uh, the pipeline speed up will go down. It will be less than the depth now why and uh, how because the pipeline stalls will be dependent on the branch frequency and uh, we will see that almost 20 percent of the instructions are actually branches in uh, most of the applications okay that means uh, th these instructions will come frequently and uh, even if you uh, consider the best case uh, that there will be a two cycle penalty right assuming the branch condition and the targets are kind of resolved in execute stage so uh, there is a bubble for at least two cycles right so this will uh, introduce 
stalls and uh, that will actually affect your uh, overall uh, pipeline speed. We'll have a tutorial on uh, uh, these things and we'll uh, get a better picture once we uh, look into various numbers for uh, various kinds of uh, techniques and then, then uh, we'll be able to appreciate in a better way. So in summary, uh, we, we kind of discussed about uh, the data hazards in the previous lectures and the uh, uh, ways for mitigating them, either bypassing or forwarding. And if it's not possible, then there's no other option except uh, stalling the pipeline or in, uh, introducing knobs. Control hazard, uh, simple idea is you speculate and speculate that uh, you will actually go to PC plus four all the time. And uh, whenever you make a wrong uh, guess or wrong speculation, you kill all the instructions in the wrong path. Delayed branch uh, is a effective technique uh, as long as you know what exactly you are putting and, and uh, how effective those instructions are. And uh, for, with the introduction of branch delay slots, uh, it, it may uh, reduce uh, some of the uh, control hazard stalls. And because of the, all these stalls, the pipeline speed up is no longer limited by the number of stages. It is actually going down further. Okay. With that, I will stop here. Thank you.